There's something about meditation that's probably the hardest thing to even talk about because we each have to discover it in our own way. And that's what I call, it's not really a technique. It's the dawning of a kind of curiosity. You know, because as long as we're just doing a technique, it may help us arrive at a better relationship with our experience. But that doesn't really mean that we're having a deep fundamental insight into the nature of experience itself, into the nature of consciousness itself. And this is what I mean by a kind of dawning of intelligence where we actually become really curious. Instead of trying to distance ourselves from experience, distance ourselves from thought or feeling, we're extraordinarily curious. Not analytically curious, not sitting there thinking about our thinking, analyzing our thinking, but actually curious and just watching as it's arising. And if you're just watching certain thoughts arise, you know, probably 90% of thoughts, maybe more than that, you know, maybe 10% of the average human being's thoughts are actually functional. They're actually helping you do a task, right? Or they're helping you to figure out something of a practical nature that you need to use your thinking mind for. It's a very good use of mind. But the other 90% of, of thoughts for most people are actually quite chaotic. They come at you from all angles, whether you want them to arise or not want them to arise. And then we just react to that. How do I get away from those thoughts? How do I dwell in stillness? How do I find some alternative to this rampant thinking? And not only the thinking, but the body's associated sense of experience that comes with the thinking because you feel the thoughts that you attach to. And you emotionally experience the thoughts and images that you attach to. But what if one was to be not just swept away in the whole content of your experience, in the content of your mind or the content of your feeling, but this profound curiosity was to start to dawn so that you simply watched it, not to gain distance, not to gain an advantage, but actually in order to watch the very nature of this mind's tendency to almost compulsively continue to think and imagine even when it doesn't need to, in the 90% of the thoughts that it creates that really are quite random and really don't have much practical value. When you start to watch your thinking and, and feeling with great curiosity, rather than as a strategy to gain advantage. That's the difference. If you do it as a strategy to gain advantage, it's the ego's desiring to control things. But when we really, when this curiosity begins to find us, begins to dawn within us, then meditation starts to become something different. It stops being an attempt to gain advantage over your thinking or gain advantage over your feeling or to have a better thought or a better feeling, right, or better experience, preferably the best possible experience. But your motivation starts to be colored more by this innate curiosity. I say innate because it's sort of innate to consciousness. It's innate to self-consciousness. And this brings upon a whole different attitude to meditation. You may still be doing some technique, but that technique then is not being utilized to gain advantage. That te technique is actually being utilized simply to help you see more and more and more and more clearly. To be curious, you watch a thought arise. 
And when you watch a thought arise, you see that if you feed that thought, that right from the inception, right from the beginning point, it has the seed of sorrow, of conflict in it. If you're really curious, you begin to just watch this. You begin to, have to watch how this random arising of thinking, that as soon as we kind of engage it and feed it, that it actually has the seed of sorrow within it. In other words, it will end up creating a kind of conflict within you. Now, if you just sort of believe that because I've said it, then you haven't really engaged in the curiosity that I'm talking about. It's something we see for ourselves. Because I get a lot of questions, you know, about <clears throat> why does I've had this great sort of shift or I had some sort of moment of awakening or, you know, some moment of revelation and still my old patterns arise and they continue to dominate my experience, you know. And why does that happen and what do I do about it? And, and, behind, and I understand those questions, but it's also important that we become curious about the way that we frame our own desire, the way we frame our own experience. So I had this moment of clarity, this awakening, and then the next day my mind had some reaction to that and now it's, you know, now I'm caught back in my story and all the rest. And what do I do? How, basically, the question then comes, how do I get out of it? And you can exercise certain techniques to help you not be so attached, to help you have more of an objective relationship with the content of your awareness. And that's fine. But there's something even more powerful and more important than that. And that's to be curious of the whole nature of the arising of experience that takes a certain kind of quietness. I don't mean that your mind has to be quiet, but it takes a certain kind of ability to be grounded in something other than the restlessness of the mind. Because otherwise we're just always sort of at the mercy of the next pattern of thinking, the next assumption, the next conclusion, you know, all the rest.